Hello, my name is David Kerr and you're watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. The brother of Pope Benedict XVI, Monsignor Georg Ratzinger, has died at the age of 96. May he rest in peace. Monsignor Ratzinger died on Tuesday in the Bavarian city of Regensburg. In the days beforehand, he was visited by his 93-year-old brother, who journeyed beyond Italy for the first time since resigning the papacy seven years ago. Georg and Joseph Ratzinger had been close to each other since the days of their youth. They were altar boys together. They entered seminary together in 1946 and they were ordained to the Holy Priesthood together in the summer of 1951 by Cardinal Michael von Fulhaber of Munich. Throughout his life, Georg Ratzinger was recognised as a gifted musician. He began playing the organ in his local church when he was just 11 years old. In 1957, he became the choral director of his home parish in the town of Traunstein. And then in 1964, he was made musical director of St. Peter's Cathedral in Regensburg. It's a post he held for 30 years. Under his direction, the Cathedral Choir recorded albums with major music labels, including Deutsche Grammophon and Ars Musici, in honour of his work. Monsignor Ratzinger was awarded numerous honours during his lifetime, including Germany's Federal Cross of Merit and the Bavarian Order of Merit. The top court in the United States has declared that bans upon state aid being given to religious schools, including Catholic schools, are unconstitutional. The ruling from the US Supreme Court on Tuesday said that if a state chooses to subsidise private education, it cannot then deny that subsidy to a private school simply because it's religious in nature. Such bans are currently in place in 37 states across the US. This week's ruling has been welcomed by the US Bishops Conference. They issued a statement in response stating that the full participation of religious institutions is essential for a strong civil society. The statement also described the ruling as, quote, a blow to the odious legacy of anti-Catholicism in America. The lead plaintiff in the case, Kendra Espinosa, is a mother of two from Montana whose daughters attend a private Christian school. Romania has established a new National Day of Awareness of Violence Against Christians. It will take place each year on August the 16th. The new Day of Awareness was given the approval of Romania's parliament on Wednesday. The law creating the day was introduced into the country's Chamber of Deputies last year by the politician Daniel Gheorghe. He hopes his initiative will become an annual sign of awareness by Romanian citizens of the violence and persecution Christians have faced and still face around the globe. A true communicator dedicates themselves completely to the welfare of others. That was the message of Pope Francis to the participants of the Catholic Media Conference, which took place this week under the theme of Together While Apart. The three-day annual event is organised by the US-based Catholic Press Association, although this year, due to COVID-19 restrictions, delegates were online and virtual rather than together and in person. Noting the theme of the conference, the Holy Father emphasised the importance of the media in, quote, bringing people together, shortening distances, providing necessary information and opening minds and hearts to the truth. Pope Francis then suggested that in an age marked by conflict and polarisation, the media should help people, and especially the young, to distinguish good from evil. People who live in the United Kingdom's capital city, London, are more religious than those who live elsewhere in the UK. That's according, anyway, to a new survey commissioned by the London-based think tank Theos, they found that 62% of Londoners identify themselves as religious, compared to just 53% across the rest of the UK. Meanwhile, one in four Londoners attend a religious service at least once a month, compared to one in 10 in the rest of the UK. It's thought those figures may be due to the relatively higher numbers of immigrants who live in London. The survey also found that practicing Christians are more likely to give their time and money to charitable initiatives than their non-religious neighbours. Finally, Pope Francis has named a new bishop for the Diocese of Kilmore in Ireland. He's 60-year-old Father Martin Hayes, who is a priest of the Archdiocese of Cashel and Emley. The Diocese of Kilmore straddles the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, with parishes in both jurisdictions. Father Hayes was ordained to the Holy Priesthood in 1989, a graduate of the University of Limerick. He completed his studies for the priesthood at the Diocesan Seminary in Thurles, before going on to gain a, a licentiate in philosophy from the Pontifical University of St Thomas Aquinas in Rome. The date for his ordination is yet to be announced. Congratulations, Bishop-elect Hayes and Multisanos. 
Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news from across the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.